Will Dragonflight expansion save WoW? Maybe, I hope so, but not necessarily. And in this video I will tell you my honest thoughts about it all, the good, and there is a lot of good, and not so good. So what is Dragonflight promising us, in a nutshell? Bird's eye view, for now, before we look closely at the key points. Well, Dragonflight opens with an amazing, quite emotional, highly detailed and refreshing cinematic that WoW team almost always absolutely nails, in my opinion, a definitely more appealing premise of a storyline than the crap Shadowlands and Sylvanas were, and then it shows us a fair amount of flashy and exciting new content that a lot of players will come back to WoW for, without a doubt. But all of that glossy surface, in my humble opinion, is underpinned by the same old-school leadership that simply learned a few new tricks of how to manage their community better, while hiding their real intentions and same old, same old underlying game design. If you are new here, this is the only disclaimer that you're going to get from me in this video. I will always love WoW, but I am a deeply scarred and currently retired veteran of the game who has been lied to and deceived by WoW leadership and disrespectful Blizzard PR policies for many years. And while I absolutely keep my fingers crossed for WoW improvements, I and want to believe that all of what we've seen revealed are signs of better things to come. It will take a lot of genuinely visible efforts and product demonstration by the WoW team for me to believe that they've truly learned something and are on a new course. Now let's take a closer look at uh, the key points of the expansion reveal. We will get my concern out of the way first and then talk about somewhat promising new features after this very first point to make that Ian Hazekostas is still game director for WoW. He is same old, smooth-talking ex-lawyer Ian, still in full power at Blizzard by the looks of it, and in my humble opinion, he is still pretending to listen to the community while staying the course and steering the ship exactly the same way as they did for the past few years. Why? Why am I saying this? Because all you need to do here is listen to his comments about 9.1.5 and Shadowlands expansion in general. He admits at some point that they might have not done as well as they should have, which is a very faint version of giving us a hint of admission, not an apology by the way, for being tone deaf and pushing crap content out in spite of all the community protests. He says that they listened to the community feedback in 9.1.5, that they designed that patch from ground up. Where is that visible? Honestly, where? Maybe a tiny bit out of desperation of losing players, such as things like, you know, easier flying unlock that it took us uh, all all the way up to um, patch 9.2 by the way to get you know but overall what we saw in 9.2 and i'm not even gonna go back to talking about 9.1.5 here is more time gated content and sheer boredom really for casuals in the game while the mythic plus players and raiders just got more of same old same old how is this new direction and listening to the community that they are trying to pretend to have taken? They haven't. It's plain and simple. So unless we are choosing to remain naive and ignore the facts, this fact alone is the main reason for concern, or at the very least to remain reserved on what Dragonflight will actually turn out to be at the end of the day. Now let's move on to more promising and uplifting stuff. First of all, the story. Story sounds great, everyone in a magical world loves dragons and everything that has something to do with them. If you don't, I have two questions for you. First, what exactly don't you like about dragons? And second, what's wrong with you? Just kidding. Not really. Second point, Dragon Isles seems to be designed and even looks like Broken Isles in their more successful Legion expansion, which I don't mind by the way, it's Warcrafty and pretty enough for my liking. What I always get a little bit of an immediate allergic reaction to is when someone pretends like it's something never seen before. Wow, people, we'll give you some new zones and dungeons, how exciting is that? 
Yep, it's exciting since new stuff is always exciting, like a pair of new shoes, if you are into buying new shoes like some people are. But it's not actually something innovative and new, not at all. Let's not pretend that it is, okay? Next point, the new race, Drakthea. It's okay, in my opinion, and other than cosmetics, such as horns and color of scales and hair, it seems to be very, very heavily relying on the old rigs and animations from Draenei by the looks of it, and Demon Hunters as a specific class with their gliding. I get that they need to be humanoid, to fit into buildings and so on, I understand it, but they already have two forms, like Worgen by the sound of it. So why not make one of those forms fully like a dragon form? What's the point of making an almost human looking dragon need? Who then apparently turns into an even more human form with horns? I just don't think that they went far enough with it to be exciting enough. It's an opportunity absolutely missed. Like why a Drakthea needs to ride an actual dragon? if they are of draconic nature, with wings themselves. It's just dumb. Come on, admit it. Point number four. New class bound to this Drakthea race, okay? It's a ranged DPS, okay. Colorful spells representing different draconic aspects, okay too. But hard to tell if it will be meaningful enough for us as players. Or will it turn out to be a mishmash of everything, kinda like the old mage class design felt, sometimes at least, with frost, fire, frost, fire, ar arcane being parts of the same kind of spellcasting design. It looks like either way, they are not that far in proper class design here, as at least I didn't hear any specifics. Or they are planning a deeper dive, I suppose, to reveal later, I'm not sure about that. I would have hoped that they'd be further along, personally, as they've been working on this for a while, and also there is kind of pressure to give us something a lot sooner rather than later. Healing spec of Drakthea? Again, no idea, as they also didn't show much there at all. There are some mentions of bronze dragon flight influence here with some time tricks, healing wounds and so on, which sounds kind of cool on paper, but also potentially too complex for a casual chilled player to appreciate, in all honesty. But again, we don't know anything pretty much at this stage to make any conclusions there. Final point from me is the solo friendliness and self-sustain specifically of this new race and class. It is not easy to solo level or generally play World of Warcraft in any way other than as part of a group, as a ranged DPS or a healer if you don't have a pet. This will need a serious kind of tankiness aspect and self-sustain to make a class attractive to casuals properly, who, I will remind you, are the lifeblood of this game, not the 2% of the remaining WoW population who are raiders or who have reliable groups of friends to play with and level with all the time. I just hope that the Blizzard team think about this design aspect of the class and get it right. I think that's critical. Point number five, how to train your dragon, aka dragon riding system. Good idea, just feels like, once again, like with Kung Fu Panda, it feels like a couple of years later than it should have been. Do you know what I mean? Um, it's still very heavily based on the certain appeal of animated universe. Um, and of course it's exciting, especially the fact that you can dragon ride straight away rather than wait until late end game and collecting every achievement imaginable before you can fly. So this brings up an elephant in the room that I don't think that they have addressed explicitly, but again, let me know in the comments below the video if they did and I've just missed it. So dragon riding versus normal flying. Will both systems coexist? Or will one supersede and complement another? So why dragon ride in the first place if you already have flying? Only to traverse Dragon Isles because normal flying doesn't work there? I'd say that's probably the most likely scenario, but I would like to hear it explicitly from the devs. I know that some people lost their mind about all the tricks, spirals, gaining speed, proper flying, and they kind of claim that it's going to be fun, um, you know, but I would say meh to all of that because I'm honest about it. 
Maybe you would like to compete in dragon races on the hanging waterfalls and so on. I probably will too for the whole five minutes. And I don't judge if you think that this would be the heart of the game going forward. But I would say that vast majority of players like it easy. They got used to easy flying, like mindless flying or hanging in the air above, you know, an auction house in Ogrima. And now you would have to work for it. So a lot of people will use dragon riding just to get from point A to point B, if that's the only way to fly, obviously. And also the subsystem of this dragon riding thing where you're decorating your mounts, creating all these extra horns, extra armor and all that kind of stuff, that's good. And that's what majority of people are going to be doing. So speaking of mounts, does it mean that Dragonflight basically makes other mounts, specifically flying mounts, obsolete? Since, you know, in... We presume in Dragon Isles you cannot fly normally, you would have to Dragon Ride, and for that you need to rely on a Dragon. I don't particularly mind that, I'm just asking. I bet that the only other mounts of value will remain the Repair Yak and the Auction House Long Boy, if that. Talent System Revamp sounds good to me, can't talk too much about it, as, you know, the current WoW system of talents is just way, way, way too basic and primitive, uh, and every class plays kinda the same. It's especially obvious if you've detached yourself from the game like I did for a long time and played something offering a lot more build customization options such as Path of Exile or even the good old Blizzard's own Diablo. WoW talents and combat specs just look way 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 too primitive and same same after you've been outside and seen something a lot more developed, a lot more versatile, which in turn makes it all rather boring and repetitive. Ian says that they've learned from WoW Classic, but I honestly think that it's just another cross-promotional lie and a friendly gesture towards Classic. Not that it needs it much, as it's a lot more alive than present-day retail WoW anyway, in my view. Professions revamp was mentioned. In my opinion, again, they show a couple of things that look promising, but it, this is not extensive enough and not good enough. At least they did not reveal anything that would make me excited. Work orders that you can put on the, it, the auction house, okay, really, but is that all? Surely not, I get it, I'm just saying that at this stage I'd expect to hear a lot more about the system before I get particularly excited and we can talk a little bit more about this. But I am generally not a crafter, I don't judge people who are crafters specifically and they're like, oh, but they said that you can decorate your miner and have a hat with a light and all that kind of stuff. Come on, man, like if, if that's enough for you, great. Again, I don't judge, but that's absolutely not enough for me. Final point, the long, long overdue uh, native UI revamp, redesign. I can't express just how embarrassingly long overdue this feature is in WoW, but I guess they're finally doing it. That's a good thing, right? Will it replace the need for custom UI add-ons such as Domino or LVUI? I, at this stage, doubt it, but maybe I'll be surprised. So I'm open to that, of course. I've always been a minimalist in the game when it comes to using UI add-ons. I only use what I absolutely need. So any native support for movable bars, map, and character frames is good, in my opinion. And that's about it, my friends. That's what I think about Dragonflight expansion. Overall, look, unsurprisingly, I'm quite excited. I'm quite excited about what potentially it's going to bring. Will it save WoW? Like I said, I am reserved because the leadership remained unchanged in the game. Very keen to talk to you in the comments below. What do you think about this? Have you lost your mind after seeing the cinematic? Are you absolutely in love with, you know, how to train your dragon in World of Warcraft? Um, let's talk about it. Let's just keep an eye on this, especially the further reveals from the development team about how the class, how the new class is going to work. That is going to be obviously very pivotal to this expansion and just see if it's good enough for us all to come back in troves into World of Warcraft, but that is not going to happen soon anyway. There is a very, very, very low chance, in my opinion, that we will see the game in 2022. I would personally, if I had to bet my money on this, I agree with some other slightly more overhyped people, but I still regardless agree with them. And I think that the release date is going to be at the earliest in the first quarter of 2023, which is, in my opinion, too late. Too late. Yes, people will come back, but that is a massive, massive subscription and player base and faith in the team loss for a lot of people, us, who are sitting on the sidelines wishing the game all the best, but we are not that ready to come back to Shadowlands, to this stale ecosystem and just, what, be bored there and keep paying subscription? No thanks. No thanks from me. 
thanks very much for tuning in. So thanks to you though for supporting me and bearing with me if you watch the whole video, especially like the video while you're at it. If you've been here through this all these close to 15 minutes of me chatting to you, and I'll be speaking with you again about something either more Dragonflight or my other games, Path of Exile, probably related very, very soon. Thanks very much again for tuning in. Talk to you again next time. Gyro out.